Welcome everyone and thank you for attending this lunch and learn session organised in collaboration between the Knowledge and Library Services at NCIC and Boost, which is the Northeast and North Cumbria Learning and Improvement Community. Uh, my name is Ashley Eaton and I am from Boost um, and today we are joined by Emma Jane, who is the Regional Project Manager in the North from Advantage Mentoring. And Emma Jane's going to be talking to us today about who um, Advantage Mentoring is and what they are doing to support young people's mental health. These lunch and learns um, are designed to be a relaxed and informal space for health and social care to come together um, and share their experiences. So before we um, kick off with today's session, um, just some very uh, quick protocols. Um, if you're able um, to mute yourself, that would be much appreciated um, when you're not speaking. Um, if you post any questions in the chat, and we'll also have um, some time for questions at the end once Emma Jane has finished presenting. Um, please pass on, share the learning, spread the word um, about these sessions, and please be aware that we are recording um, the session. Uh, we will um, provide a link um, to the feedback in the chat. So um, if you're able to complete that, that would be much appreciated. Um, it's very short, just um, a couple of questions. Um, I will now hand over to Emma Jane. Hi everyone, thanks for attending and showing interest um, in advantage, advantage mentoring. Mentoring. Um, it's great to have you here, and hopefully, it will be a nice insight to what we do. Um, so, to kick off, um, what is Advantage Mentoring? So, our mission is to provide impactful mental health support for, for young people by bringing together professional football club organisations and local NHS. Advantage is a unique partnership between two community assets and anchor institutions. The charitable arms of football um, football clubs known as club community organisations and their local NHS trusts. The programme has been designed by senior NHS strategists and CCO staff to increase access to NHS child ad adolescents mental health services and to help tackle waiting times and reduce health inequalities by providing weekly one-to-one -one mentoring support for young people aged 14 to 21 with mild to moderate mental health and emotional wellbeing support needs. We provide key interventions and assistance for young people to proactively manage their mental wellbeing, re-establish aspirations and a sense of connection. The programme supports the, giving, uh, the getting active and getting help part of the Thrive framework and provides and builds capacity without taking away from NHS staff time to achieve access targets. As per the NHS long term plan, the Advantage Mentoring programme widens access to services closer to home, reduces unnecessary delays and delivers specialist mental health care, which is based on a clearer understanding of young people's needs and, in, and is provided in ways that would better work for them as an effective evidence-based service. Next slide, please, Ashley. Cool. So let's have a look at the ins and outs of the programme. So our mentoring sessions are led by young people and what they want to talk about. The programme's tailored around that young person throughout their start to the exit of the programme. Each young person will have a one hour individual session with their CCO mentor once per week. The mentoring sessions are, info are, are, are an informal space to chat and connect with their mentor. The sessions are delivered using youth work principles and approaches. And within the one to one mentoring um, sessions, each young person will set their own goal based outcomes and during each session work towards achieving their set, their set goals. The goals can be personal, educational, social and um, to do with employment or well-being related. It's completely up to that young person what they choose to work on with their mentor to achieve these. The sessions take place at the club's community arms inspirational club facilities on a weekly basis. The young person can stay on the programme for up to six months 
or less than that if they're ready to move on. On an average of um, on an average nationally on the program, um, a young person may stay on the program around about four and a half months. And at that time of exit, an exit plan is put into action for this time. Many young people go on to join some of the existing programmes that the CCO have to offer and continue to be involved in the community hub of the CCO. So what's the role of the NHS Trust within the Advantage Mentoring? Firstly, it's to support in the recruitment and assessment of young people through various streams, including CAMS waiting lists, or for those referred to CAMS who do not meet the threshold of tier one to two low to moderate mental health. Referrals can come through many organisations, for example, as I've said, CAMS, the CAMS waiting list, the CCOs, other existing programmes that they have within the club, local colleges and schools, youth services and other youth provisions via healthcare services such as GPs um, and social workers. So within the programme, a young person will be screened by their designated clinician and all young people are offered a single screen and assessment appointment, either face to face or remotely, whichever suits them and their needs at that time. The screening assessment consists of the WHO 5, the PSS, which is the perceived, um, perceived stress scale, the ORS, the outcome rating scale. Once the young person has been assessed, they are then handed over to the CCO mentor and the designated lead clinician who is a band seven or above offers weekly supervision sessions to ensure that the, that there is a chance of reflective practice and helping the CCO mentor think through what support is needed um, for that young person and what approach might be helpful to pursue them with ongoing um, forward clinician support and offering the scaffolding of the clinician support to the mentor through the programme building strong working relationships between the NHS Trust and the CCO through the Advantage Mentoring Programme. So the next slide, please, Ashley. So who's taking part? So 60%, around about 60% of referrals come from the NHS waiting list and 40% of referrals come through CCO programmes and community referrals. Um, Nationally on the programme, we have a, a large intake of young males on the programme and we've seen um, through the Anna Freud evaluation that we've had that traditionally um, young males may not seek that traditional um, NHS mental health support and they see that the Advantage Mentoring Programme offered at this club CCO is more suitable to them so they can say um, you know, for example, um, one of the young people on the programme may not say that they're going to go and seek support for, for their mental health um, within their um, NHS trust, but they may say that they're going to go to their club, to go at their football club to go and seek um, sort of some guidance and support or just speak to um, their football coach. And 33% of the young people on the programme nationally are female. And we found that working on the programme that we're meeting that IMD of around about 2.0 nationally. And um, so we're really getting into um, the different demographics of community hubs and outreaching the programme to those in most need. So the average age on the programme is around about 16 years old, but we are also um, trialling the programme currently um, at the age of 11. So we're trying to support those young people who are transitioning from year six in primary school to that of year seven in secondary school, um, as we feel that that support need is really needed during that important time of their educational life. Next slide, please, Ashley. So we'll go on to um, the stats of the Anna Freud. So we're working in partnership with the Anna Freud Centre to provide independent expert research on the programme, its approach and its impact. The report um, presents an overview of an independent evaluation of the outcomes of participants of the Advantage programme. The Anna Freud report found that mentees reported statistically significant improvements across all four typical measurements in areas of mental, mental well-being, stress and progress towards their individual goals. 
Our last programme report was in 2022 and this full report can be accessed through our web page. So to conclude, um, the Advantage programme is able to have a positive impact um, on mental well-being for young people with mild to moderate mental health needs and more specifically a demographic of young people who are um, amongst the most least likely groups to access CAM services. The programme has so far been an effective way to engage the young people who do not traditionally access mental health support nationally. And the Advantage Mentoring Programme has proven that when bringing together two great anchoring institutions um, to support mental health in children and young people, such as the CCOs and the NHS Trust, Advantage is helping in bringing down barriers and building stronger communities together. So next slide, please, Ashley. So, yeah, um, has anybody got any questions at all? Thank you so much, Emma Jane, um, for presenting um, and sharing with us this fantastic work that's going on. It uh, looks like we've got uh, Matthew, um, who's popped his hand up. Matthew, did you want to come in and ask a question? Yeah, hi. Is this available at Carlisle Football Club? Is, are they one of the teams that are involved? Um, so currently we're in, um, we're not in the northeast at the moment, but we've got fantastic relationships with um, Newcastle, Sunderland and Middlesbrough. And we are currently in conversations with Carlisle um, to hopefully get that push of the programme, not only in the northeast, but across North Cumbria as well. Okay. Fantastic. Thanks, Emma Jane. I can tell you some of the clubs that I'm currently working with. Yeah, Maybe that'll be help. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I'm currently working across Liverpool um, Foundation, working across Wolves, West Brom and Albion, um, Aston Villa and Leicester. And in total nationally, we've got 14 clubs that we're working with. And the programme was born in its infancy in West Ham which is in the south, and then later joined up with Arsenal and Leighton Orient. And as I said, we're nationally across 14 clubs. Fantastic. Thanks, Emma Jane. So is this, so obviously this is specifically targeted um, for children, but just that it's my own curiosity, to be honest with you. Have you thought about um, branching out also into, into adult mental health as well? Yeah, we have most definitely. And um, the reason mm. why we go to 21 is that, um, the children's services stopped at the age of 18 mm -hmm. and so we wanted to go we didn't want a, like a cliffhanger mm -hmm. um so we've gone over that to the age of 21 to ensure that that you know that transitional phase may be coming out of college um you know um, and sort of getting that career path that maybe some young people may want or just support in general um so we wanted to ensure that we weren't you know leaving that cliffhanger cliffhanger mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we are in conversations about different ways that we could branch out and take the programme most definitely. And one of those is, of course, in adult mental health as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because it's a, it's it's such a different way to kind of c come at that service, if you know what I mean, by by using football clubs. So yeah, most definitely. Um, yeah, it's um, a great it's, idea. A lot of the football clubs that we do work with, um, they work from the age of some some are from birth um all the way up to you know um later ages 80s 90s in some of the um existing programs that they do do so the capacity is there if we were to obviously go into that with the football clubs of course brilliant so oh, fab does anybody else have any questions for emma jane or feel free to um pop them in the chat if you um if you don't want to to come off mute that's absolutely fine as well so how long has this been running for, Emma Jane? Apologies if you did mention yeah, that no, in your of course. presentation. Um, but... it, it was born in during COVID in 2020. Okay. Um, so obviously the need for mental health support during that time um, was at its at most high. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's sort of gone on from there. We've been our own separate um, organisation. We came away from West Ham, I believe, a year and a half ago. Okay. Um, and we realised that the need and need and support was not only a, a London thing, but it's yes, national. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's national. Um, and we um, 
we understand the the need and support for mental health within young people, um, especially that in the northeast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. That's fab. We've had a question um, come in the chat. Um, so for NHS staff that are not working on the front line, um, I suppose, are they able to come in and support at all with this, Emma Jane? Is there kind um, of volunteering opportunities or anything like that? We we are open to that. So we have discussed them um, because I do believe that there is sort of a reserve um, for maybe retired or those who are not wanting to be in practice currently of um, clinicians. And that is something that we are looking at also because obviously we're trying to take the strain off the um, clinicians who are currently in practice. So, of course, yes, that's definitely an avenue we will be looking into. Um, if it's something of interest of a particular person, and I know my contact details will be on here, please do um, reach out and contact us and we'd be happy to, to conversate with you. Fantastic. That's great, Emma Jane. I'm literally I'm just going to pop your contact details in the chat box now um, for people to get in contact. Um, I can see Matthew's typing. Matthew, feel free to come off mute if you wanted um, to, to share anything. It's not a problem. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just saying, um, could we get some sort of alert for when this does sort of arrive in our area? Do you know, like when when you've had the conversations with Carlisle United? Yeah, my, my, my um, my stepson would be really interested in, I think, and really help him. Most definitely. Um, so not only with the clubs that they would um, advertise what's going on, but then also um, the local NHS trust will advertise this as well. But we can update Boost and hopefully they can support us in that and our relationship to ensure that everybody is aware of when the programme is up and running and, and when and how to access that. Brilliant. Yeah, I'm sure sure we'll keep in contact, Emma Jane, and yeah, we'll be more than happy um, to, to share any updates um, as we receive them. That's not a problem at all. Brilliant. So if there isn't any more questions, I don't think there are. We'll look to wrap up the session. So thank you so much, You're welcome. Um, Emma Jane, for coming along um, and sharing that. Um, as I said, I've popped um, Emma Jane's details in the chat box as well. So if you wanted to find out anything um, more um, that hasn't been shared today, um, you know, please check that out. And I've also um, put a link to the website as well if you wanted to have um, a look at that as well. I imagine you provide updates on the website as well, yes. Emma Jane. So, yes, you know, we always keep, keep checking on that um, as another means as well, definitely. Um, we'll also. Um, pop a link um, to be able to give the feedback in the chat um, as well. So um, please um, don't forget to fill that in. That'd be much appreciated. Um, our next Lunch and Learn session is on the 23rd of January um, at 12.30. I can see Kim's literally just popped that in the chat box for me. Um, we're going to be joined by uh, Debbie Austin, who's going to be speaking to us about um, understanding Lucy, our journey with positive behavioural support. Um, and Debbie's going to be talking about her lived experience supporting her daughter um, who has a severe learning disability um, and is also autistic as well. Um, so it'd be great if you're able to come along to that session. Um, once again, Emma Jane, thank you so much um, for coming along um, and sharing the work that you guys are doing. Um, we do really appreciate it. Um, and thank you everybody for attending. Um, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their afternoon. Thank you very much.